Welcome to Coffee with Mike, the umbrella in Japan. It's now about week six in the quarantine. My hair is starting to get out of control. I'm starting to look like a, I'm starting to look like a lounge singer at the Holiday Inn of around the 1970s. But let me tell you about the umbrella in Japan. The umbrella originally came to Japan around the fourth century. And when my parents lived in Japan in the 1950s, the paper umbrella was a symbol of great wealth and prestige. My parents didn't have very much money, but they had about four umbrellas. The umbrella is also a symbol of protection. It's called a wagasa. It's a, it's a protection from the rain and other harmful things in life. Before uh, we go out to the porch to look at the... Uh, Five works I've selected. There are many, many works on the website of umbrellas. But before we go out to the porch, I'm going to take my sunglasses off because I'm inside. As part of the ritual of coffee with Mike, we're going to do the baseball toss near the uh, old Japanese scroll. And so this is dedicated to all my friends in elementary school. And again, you, you bounce it off and you catch it. So let's go out to the porch and look at the umbrellas of Japan. And although this isn't an umbrella, this is a really nice painting by a guy named Brian Williams, who's been in Japan over 40 years. He lives in a 150-year-old Japanese farmhouse. So we'll begin by looking at this very famous print called The Snowstorm, done in 1931 or 32, I can't remember, by Shinsui. Shinsui was the top printmaker of beautiful women from the 1920s to the 1950s. That takes us to 1937 to a printmaker named Hasui, who I showed you last week. This is called Zinsetsu Temple. You can see that rain scenes and snow scenes are the most sought after prints in Japanese art. In reality, it's not that much fun. We're almost in the middle of spring here in Ohio, and nobody really wants any more rain or snow. The next artist I'm going to show you is a guy named Clifton Carhu. And Clifton Carhu lived in Japan for 57 years, and he did mainly woodblock prints of the traditional buildings of Kyoto. This is called Rainy Day. And it's pretty much like that in, in Cleveland right now. It, it, it's pretty gray, and it's probably going to pour later on today. But Clifton Carhu was born in Minnesota, and he goes to Japan 57 years ago. And I think he originally went there almost like a priest, but he became uh, quite a, a wild guy in Japan. It took me 10 years to get to meet him. Every time I tried to go meet him, he'd say, Michael, I'll only deal with this gallery in Tokyo. And finally, around 1997, he agrees to meet with me. And after he agrees to meet with me, everybody says, oh, you don't want to meet Clifton Carr, who's really tough and nasty, and, and you don't want to meet this guy. But I figured, what the heck, I've tried all these years. I'm going to go meet Clifton Carr. Who. So I go to his studio. His wife lets me in and tells me that Clifton will be in in about two minutes. He lived in Kyoto. And about two minutes later, this big Western guy comes in dressed in this very understated kimono and he sits down on the couch. And the first thing he does, I've never met him before, he looks me straight in the eye. And the first thing he says to me, he looks at me, he says, uh, I hate people. And uh, I started laughing. I, I said, that's okay. I, I said, I, I hate people too. And he laughed back. He was a really nice guy. He passed away almost 10 years ago, I think but he was the top Western printmaker of the traditional buildings of Kyoto. This is a painting by Shigeki Kuroda, and Shigeki Kuroda does only images of bicycles and umbrellas. This is a painting by him. I can't remember the title here. This is called Typhoon. It's a painting on handmade mulberry. There's two layers of mulberry. The first layer is this very transparent layer of umbrellas right here, and the top layer is much more vivid. Kuroda says that things move by so quickly in Tokyo that he wants to give you that feeling of speed and movement. And it's actually illegal to ride your bicycle with an umbrella in Japan, but I see it all the time. 
Everybody thinks everybody in Japan follows the rules, but I, I don't think so. This next print is by Joel Stewart. He's the guy who burned his place down. This is called Floating World of these the umbrellas in front of the, an entrance to probably one of the temples. And the last piece I'm going to show you is by Daniel Kelly, and it's called Buttercups. This is a special edition he did for the Verne collection. It's on handmade paper from Nepal of the schoolgirls um, walking in the rain. That brings us to the end of Coffee with Mike. I'm going to send, sit in front of the James Dean Boulevard sign that my, uh, my, my mom put up here. So if, if you get nothing else out of Coffee with Mike today, the next time you go to the grocery store, if someone sneezes, just open up your umbrella. What do you got to lose? Nothing else has worked. So we always end with the shot of the day, and then I'll show you my, my, my dad's garden that's pretty rough, but I'll show you how a wealthy person walks out into a garden in Shaker Heights, Ohio. So here's the shot of the day. There's the basket. Again, my friends and I would would do this for hours in the in the winter and uh, cold months in in Ohio, which is there's a lot of cold months here. So here's the shot of the day. And I missed again, but let me show you the garden. Stay safe, everybody, and uh, that's Coffee with Mike.